Good morning. Again, it is great to, to be here this morning and see each of you. Charlie, thank you for that children's message. That was, that was awesome. Gifts are important. We talked about gifts last week. We talked about a perfect gift last week. And I told you if you have ever given me anything, I probably still have it. I keep things. I keep things. I'm, I'm a collector. A collector of everything. Um, I don't know if you all remember what gift we got Father's Day from this church. But I remember. I used it. New Year's night. It's a flashlight. It's a flashlight that I had in the console of my truck. I hadn't used it at all. Until New Year's evening. New Year's evening, I'm taking, uh, I'm going to pick a lady up at the nursing home, and I'm going up Asheville Highway, up 2570, where it's three lanes. And in the left lane, there was a slow car, so I went over to the right lane to pass it, and my truck just stopped. It stopped. All else has already told me it's because it was a Chevrolet. I'm not sure, but, uh, but it just stopped right in the middle of the road. So I thought, I'm just going to back up, because I can't get off the road, it's an incline, so I can't get off the road going forward. I thought, I'll just back up, there's a driveway there, there's a ditch beside me, but there's a driveway. I started to back up and I can't steer it. So I'm in the right lane of the highway. And I, I can't do anything. It's daylight right then. So I called a roadside assistant service, let's just say. And they said they'd send somebody right out. And after an hour, I called them back and said, it's going to be dark here in a second. And they said, well, somebody's going to be there. I'm like, then it got dark. Thank God I had that flashlight. Because I could direct traffic around my truck. Rhonda and Abby came to my rescue. Rhonda was driving my little car because her car had gotten hit last week. <laughs> and they sat with me. And um, I used that flashlight. And I appreciate it very much. It saved me a bunch. And, and you know, that I, I was thinking that maybe a police officer might come by. And finally... One did, but it wasn't a, a county guy or a state trooper guy. It was actually a Knoxville City guy was on his way home. Actually, be a, it's actually a friend of Hayden's. So he stopped and sat with me till the tow truck. It did finally come. Um, but it, uh, I appreciate that gift. And again, that will be one that I remember forever. Um, and was very thankful that I, that I had it. Um, but um, this morning, we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about the baptism of Jesus. The baptism of Jesus. Have you ever been called to do something that you didn't feel worthy of? That you didn't feel like you were good enough to do it? In ministry, it's actually happened to me a few times. Somebody's asked me to do something, and I think, you know, what can I do? And usually it's a funeral. You know, if someone asks me to do a funeral, usually I think, you know, I, I know the life this person's lived. What can I say? Or it could be because it may be a pastor I'm doing the funeral with. I'm like, you know, I feel insecure because of their... But the thing about it is God calls you to do things. And if he calls you, you may not be worthy, but because of him and his grace and his power, you are worthy. You are worthy. Again, not because of anything you can do on your own, but because of the perfect Savior that we serve. I'm going to start, I'm going to read some scripture. I'm going to read Matthew, I'm going to read uh, Matthew 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. 
John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is the proper, it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice came from heaven and said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And this is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for for sending your son, Lord. Thank you for his perfect life. Lord, thank you for his grace and his power and his mercy. Lord, this morning, as we study the scripture, Lord, I just pray that you open our minds, you open our hearts, Lord, and we look for ways that you may be calling us to spread your word, to spread the good news to a world that definitely needs it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, have you ever felt insecure? Or have you ever felt not worthy to do something? I've had several people in, my, in the last few years come to me and ask me to do a funeral. And they'll ask me to do a funeral, and it's their funeral. And I'll say, well, don't be in no hurry. I'm busy. Uh, but, uh, but I'll be honored to do it. But some people who come to me, it's like, you know, how can I add anything to the life this person's led? They've showed me so much grace. They've shown me the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. And the thing about it is, when, when it happens, it makes us reflect on the reasons why we're insecure. It's because when we're insecure, it's because we try to do things on our own. It's because we may even be trying to please ourselves. In reality, when we're doing things to please God, and He's calling us to something, He's going to give us everything that we need. He will give us everything that we need to accomplish whatever He's calling us to. Another thing that's really nice at the end of this scripture, it, the Father says, this is my Son who I'm well pleased has anyone ever looked at you and told, told you that you're, they're proud of you? I am proud of you. I am well pleased with you. Has any human being ever done that? Imagine God the Father, the voice of God the Father coming out and saying, with whom I am well pleased. I don't know if you know it, but I am, I try to, I'm more of a fixer and a pleaser, and an encourager is what I, what I try to do. That's really what I try to do. We don't hear enough positive words, but I can't imagine hearing the voice of the Father saying that he's well pleased with me. And I remember my earthly father telling me that he was proud of me, he was well pleased, and man, that's one of the best feelings in the world. But I can't imagine the voice from heaven Saying that. So we've got John the Baptist who's been asked to baptize Jesus. He doesn't feel worthy. He was insecure. And when Jesus came on the scene, John the Baptist had been preaching for a while. He'd been doing some great things. Matter of fact, he was preaching up a storm and people were coming to this desert in droves to hear him. He told people to repent and they repented. He told people to confess their sins, and they confessed. He told them to be baptized, and they were being baptized. You see, John the Baptist was Israel's first prophet in 400 years. The prophets had been silent for 400 years. And John the Baptist was doing some great ministry, some great work. Then all of a sudden, Jesus came to him and wanted to be baptized. He felt insecure. Of all the things that he had done for the kingdom of God, he felt insecure about it. John actually would have prevented it. He said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me. You see, John had spoken with great authority in his preaching, in his preaching about the kingdom of God, 
But when Jesus came to him to be baptized, John faced real authority. He faced the Son of God. John wasn't sure what to do. He wanted to be obedient. He wanted to be faithful. But his first instinct was to do nothing. He wanted to stop the whole thing. And he just wanted to hide. He said, Jesus, I can't baptize you. Please don't ask me. I'm not worthy. But verse 15, Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is the proper it is proper for it in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. He was faithful. You see, sometimes, most of the time, when God calls us, our obedience and our faithfulness is really what we need. He's going to provide everything else. Yeah, John the Baptist is right. He wasn't worthy to baptize the Son of God. But to fulfill why Jesus came, Jesus didn't need much from John, but he needed to be baptized. For, for, to fulfill what he had come for, he needed to be baptized. Not for the forgiveness of sins, not to repent. Jesus lived a perfect life. But he still needed to be baptized. To fulfill prophecy, to fulfill scripture, to fulfill righteousness, he needed John to baptize him. If I'd been in John's shoes, I would have felt unworthy. I would have felt insecure too. If Jesus came to me and asked me to baptize him, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what was going through John's head. See, Jesus needed John to be faithful to his calling. Jesus' calling. He didn't need John to be perfect. He needed to be faithful. He doesn't need us to be perfect. He needs us to be faithful. He needs us to be obedient. He needs us to rely on his perfection, his power, his glory, his grace, not our own. Because if we depend, if we depend on our own, we will come up short. But you see, the scripture, John was obedient. See, Matthew doesn't describe the baptism itself. But Matthew does describe the results. And when Jesus had been baptized just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And then again, the voice of heaven, the voice from heaven, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Heaven opened up the day that John baptized Jesus. Heaven opened up. The voice of God was heard for everybody who was there. Because John was faithful to his calling. Because John was obedient. It didn't happen because John was great. It happened because John was obedient. Again, John knew who Jesus was. He knew who Jesus, why Jesus came. Matter of fact, in John 3.30... John the Baptist says that I must become less, he must become greater. He knew that he was called to spread the goodness of Jesus Christ. See, God's calling us too. There is a calling on your life. Everybody here has a ministry. Everybody here has a ministry. If you're a Christian, you have a ministry. God is calling you to do something. Are you being obedient? Some of us, he's called to preach. And others, he's called to be in the mission field. Others, he's called to sing in the choir. Others, he's called to be administrators. Others, he's called who are gifted in decorating and making things look beautiful. You're called to use your gifts. He's called others to teach. You see, there's one constant thing. We're all called to do different things, but there's one constant. And that constant is we need to be faithful 
to what God's calling us. We need to be faithful to his call. Whether the call is small or the, or, or the call is great, we need to be faithful. Whether we feel like it or we don't feel like it, we need to be faithful. Whether we feel worthy or we don't feel worthy, worthy, we need to be faithful. If we're faithful in the calling to which we've been given, great things will happen. Great things will happen. I want you to think back to when you did answer God's call for something that may have been very small. It may have been a very small thing that you did, and God made something huge out of it. It may have been giving someone who didn't have a meal some food. It may have been serving someone here at the clothing closet. It seemed like nothing really was huge about it. But in someone's life, God made a huge difference because of you. Because of you. Not because of your strength. Not because of your greatness. Because you were faithful. And he used his strength and grateful to make some wonderful things happen. Never forget a few years ago. A few years ago... um, Rod and I are driving down the road. We're getting ready to get on the interstate. And I'm not a good driver anymore. I used to be decent, but uh, I'm not the best driver. But I notice things pretty quick. And we're getting on the interstate, and there's a car in front of us that's swerving and going back and forth right before we go to the interstate. And all of a sudden, they slow down, and the passenger door opened. And a lady came rolling out of there. getting on I-40 at Asheville Highway. So I pull over and I help the lady out of the road. And then all of a sudden I watch the car. And the first thing the lady says is, I've got to get back in that car. And I said, no, you can't get back in that car. You just either got knocked out of it or you left for a reason. There's something going on. And then I realized why that car stopped and backed up. And there was a little girl that jumped out. Of that car and ran over to the guardrail. That was her daughter. Luckily, the fire department got there pretty quick because they're pretty close. They're pretty close. So when the fire truck got there, they started taking care of the lady. And the little girl, I made sure she stayed on the guardrail. I looked down, and it's funny what you remember. I looked down and the little girl had shoes on the wrong feet. And that's what I noticed. I said, I can't remember her name actually, which is weird. I usually remember some small details like that. I looked down and I said, let me fix your shoes. And she said, my, what's wrong with my shoes? I said, they're on the wrong feet. And she said, I like them that way. I said, that's awesome. They look great. And she says, is my mama going to be okay? I said, your mama's in the best hands she could be in right now. They're going to take really good care of her. They're going to get her where she needs to go. I'd like to say I had this opportunity. I could have passed, but, but I didn't. It was right in front of me. I don't know why the Lord put me in... In that situation, I don't know if the little girl even remembers me. But I know the grace of God touched her that day and comforted her while her mom was being taken care of. I don't know what God's calling you to do today. I don't know what he's going to call you to do next week. But he's going to put something in front of you that he needs you to be obedient. He needs you to be faithful. And you may feel unwilling or unworthy. But guess what? He's going to equip you with everything you need. You're going to see results. When you submit to the call of ministry, you will see results. And some of the results you may see immediately. And some of them you may not. 
Some of them, you may see the heavens open up. You may hear the voice of God. And sometimes you may not. But when you're submitting to the call of God, somebody's going to hear the voice of God. God's going to work through you to make a difference in somebody's life. And it may be during your lifetime. That difference may not be known until later. But that difference will be known when you're following His will. He says, it's by His grace, it's the grace of God that we're supposed to be faithful to. We're supposed to be faithful to a calling to which God has called us. And when we are, great things will happen. Again, not because we're great. We must become less so God can be great. He must become more. In our life, we must become less and God must become greater in our life. Again, Zach Williams got a song that's less of me. I want to see more of God and less of me in my life every day. You're going to get tired of me hearing me say this, but in my life, it's easy for me because it rhymes. It's less of Stace, more of grace. Every day, when you all remember me a hundred years from now, I want you to remember what God did in my life. I don't want you to see me as a human being because I'm not perfect. But again, when I submit to the grace of God, He can work even through me. You see, because we're not acting on our own. When we submit to His grace, we submit to His calling, we're not on our own. You see, we're submitting to God's power. How powerful is God? His power is infinite. His power is infinite. So he's, if He's calling you to a big task, it may look impossible to you because we're trapped in these finite bi- bodies. We're trapped in these finite minds. But you see, the God we serve is, in, is infinite. His power is infinite. No matter the calling, it's not too big for Him. And we're not working on our timetable either. Again, we're trapped in infinite bodies. We're trapped in infinite, or we we're trapped in finite bodies and finite minds. We're trapped in time and space, but the God we serve is not. Time and space don't matter to Him. He created time and space. Time and space is to keep us on track, so we'll know where to be. God knows where to be all the time. See, that's what God can do in our lives when we submit to his authority. See, that's what God wants. That's what God wants. He wants us to believe. He wants us to have hope. He wants us to celebrate. He wants us to encourage each other. The encouragement you give somebody may be the only encouragement they see the whole week. Think about that. We live in a world that's pretty unhappy. When you encourage somebody, when you tell them that you're proud of them, when you tell them how much you love them and God loves them even more than that, that may be the only time that week they hear that message. You may be the only Bible they read. You may be the only Jesus they see that week. That's a big responsibility, and that's all of our callings. We're all called to be encouragers. We're called to be filled with joy. Again, that doesn't mean that we're happy all the time, but we can be joyful because of our faith in Jesus Christ. You see, when David acted in faith, he was able to slay Goliath. When Gideon acted in faith, he and his little band of 300 were able to defeat a whole army. Jesus was faithful. He died on the cross. He was raised from the dead. That's our example of faithfulness. Paul and Silas were faithful. The Bible is full of faithful people. What's your calling? You see, what is your calling? And don't think about it in your finite mind. Just remember that God's in charge and God will win. Matter of fact, God has already won. You see, we're on God's team. If we're on God's team, the team's stacked just a little bit. When the most powerful being in the universe is on your team, I like your chances. This week I hope and pray and I want to encourage you to listen. 
for your calling. I want God to open our minds, open our hearts, so we can hear his voice. And it may be a loud voice that we hear from heaven. And it may be when we're sitting in our quiet time. But I pray that we hear the voice of God this week. And we listen. And we're obedient. You see, again, we don't have to be perfect. We can't be perfect, but we serve a perfect example. We serve a perfect Savior. We need to be obedient. Just like Jesus didn't need John the Baptist to be perfect that day. He needed to be faithful. God's calling us to be faithful today. Are you ready to be obedient to his call in your life? Are you ready to follow Jesus' perfect example? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you do in our lives. Lord, thank you for the callings you place on our life, Lord, whether they're big or, or whether they're small. Lord, even if they look small to us, it's going to be huge in somebody's life. Just a little bit of encouragement can go so far. Just a little bit of a light from a living Savior that we can take to people in a dark world, Lord, can make such a huge difference, not because of us, but because of you. Lord, thank you for your calling on our lives. Lord, I just pray that we listen. We open our minds, we open our hearts, and we listen. And we're obedient. In Jesus' name, amen.